Welcome back, guys. Grab you a cup. It's a good cup right there. All right. As the title says, I wanted to show you guys this little number from Primary Arms. It should be no surprise to you at this point that I am an avowed primary arms junkie. I truly believe and have for many, many years <clears throat> that their optics are the best choice for the armed prepared citizen. <clears throat> I can already hear people. <sighs> Let me pause. Did not say they're the only good choice. I did not say there are not other good choices out there. I said that I personally think they are the best choice for the armed prepared citizen. There are other good choices as well. Does that satisfy everyone? Good, don't care, moving on. This is the new 1 to 6 GLX M6 Raptor. This is a bad little scope. <clears throat> now, I'm a big fan of one to sixes. Big fan of primary arms one to sixes. <clears throat> I wanted to give y'all a little history, uh, show you a couple of things. First, <clears throat> let's hit the details on this. <clears throat> this is from the GLX line. It is a <clears throat> one to six first focal plane. Hang on a second and I'll tell you. Yes, first focal plane, meaning as you adjust the magnification, the reticle enlarges and decreases with the magnification adjustment, whereas the second focal plane doesn't. First focal plane, okay? You've got wind, uh, elevation windage. It is illuminated. You've got that on the side, your battery cap over here. And let me just reach in here. <clears throat> this has the new M6 reticle in it. And it is a very cool reticle. I will put a link up on the, uh, on the website, in the description box to the website, where you can see the scope um, and see the picture of the actual reticle. I ain't fancy enough to be able to show it to you on here. <clears throat> but it is a very useful reticle. And just holding it up, I can already tell you it's going to be ridiculously fast, both up close and at a distance. Now, this one's got some really cool features that sets it apart and different from some of the other uh, one to sixes that Primary Arms offers. I'm trying to pull up a couple of things to, to show you real quick. So, <clears throat> I don't have everything memorized on this one yet, but. <clears throat> okay. Cool feature on this one, it sets it apart from some of the others. It comes with some extra elevation cap. You can take off, and these are all O-ring sealed, by the way. So they're waterproof, you get the whole nine yards. Now you've got your adjustments right here, right? But you can put this on there and it will give you external adjustment so that you can actually see your settings depends on if that's how you want to run or not that will be dependent on your preferences distances you're engaging at etc for me I will probably end up leaving the regular covered uh, turret cap on there because once I get it zeroed I really shouldn't need to mess with the elevation any 
um, not given the way the reticle works and my particular personal terrain and usage. It does have the usual adjustable diopter on the rear, which is, it, it's, it's one of my favorite things because of my astigmatism. Um, it does come with a throw lever for your adjustment ring and it's nice and tight. I'm trying to do this not mounted on the gun. So when you set it to whatever magnification you want, it is not going to move easily. Uh, I believe the lever is movable. You can adjust it around where you want it at on the scope, I believe. I could be wrong. <clears throat> Don't hold me to that. Again, I haven't played with it, but just a little bit. So, what I wanted to compare it to and show y'all, now remember, this is from the GLX line. So you've got the SLX, which is the bottom, GLX at the middle, and the PLX is the top. Prices go accordingly. So, it's more expensive than an SLX, but it's not ridiculous either for what you're getting. Um... <clears throat> I've been using primary arms 1 to 6s for a long time. In fact, this rifle right here is one of the oldest that I currently have. This is a circa 2012. This is a 10 year, 10 year old rifle um, back when Palmetto State Armory was doing chrome lined mid weight 16 inch mid length barrels I wish they still did these mid weight barrels it's not a government profile but it's not lightweight either these were really cool barrels but this is an all PSA upper but this is one of the older and they still make them um, 1 to 6 Raptors this is the new M6 Raptor this is the original 1 to 6 Raptor so the reticle's a little different, the um, adjustments and everything are a little different, etc., etc. I've been using this one for a long time, um, for a very long time. This was my primary go-to rifle. Um, I have ran this one quite a lot. Uh, it's been through a number of classes and a whole lot of training and practice, and it it's still a workhorse for me. I love it. This this scope on here really really makes it rock so i've been using that one to six original raptor which i still love and highly recommend um for quite a few years now now the scope hasn't been on there as long as i've had the gun the gun's far older than the scope just for the record <clears throat> but i wanted to also show you the third option just for comparison this is the SLX 1 to 6 variable. It's the lower price of the three, and it is a second focal plane, not a first focal plane like these two are. So it is less money, but it is still a very good scope. I have been using one of these for a while, and I like it. I like it a lot. I've got this same version on my 16 inch KS 47 that's um, it's the one that's calibrated for 762 by 39 and 300 blackout this one's 556 like the others but again same principle it's the same one to six just with a different calibration on the reticle so for comparison let's hit a couple of stats real quick because I know everybody loves stats I don't know some people just get show you a little comparison here's the size difference between the two as you can see the m6 raptor is a little bit beefier especially through the turret area and it is a little bit longer and it does have a larger rear objective okay they're both 30 millimeter tubes <clears throat> this one is heavier so for example this one is 21.3 ounces. 
trying to look at my tablet here and of course it's got to reload the page because why would it not reload the page whenever I needed it? Thank you for cooperating. I, I, I appreciate that. This one is 16.9 ounces. So 21, 16.9. This original Raptor, I bet this page is going to reload too just because it hates me. Of course it is. See, I try to be prepared, try to be a little ahead of the game and professional for you guys, and this is how, this is how my equipment treats me. <sighs> Come on, load the page. Oh, well, thank you. I, I, I appreciate you deciding to finally work for me. 17.6. So you've got 16.9, 17.6, and 21.3. I think it's 21.3. So each one's progressively a little, little heavier than the other. Now the, the older original Raptor and the M6 are just about the same. Y'all can't even see that because I'm just bass hackers. Are about the same in overall size. You just have um, larger turrets for your adjustment. This has got smaller turrets like on the SLX. There you go. <clears throat> the heart of this thing though is going to be the reticle. Um, this M6 reticle is, you can, you can see it uh, on the website. I'll see if I can splice it in, in right here. <sighs> I don't have a lot of fancy high speed editing software like some of you guys do. But let me see if I can stick one in right here. If I can, I will. But if you're seeing me now, then I couldn't. But if you did see it, then what I'm saying right now doesn't really matter. So, go figure. Anyway, M6 Raptor. I want to get this thing out to the range <clears throat> and run some drills with it. I want to try a few things. I just got to get something to put it on. I hadn't bought any new guns lately. Hadn't been sent any new guns lately. But I know what I want to do with it. Know what I want to do with it. Probably going to put this on a 16 inch upper. And I'm probably not going to go with a super expensive barrel. I want a good affordable barrel because I want to see what it'll do with this scope on it. I like I like I like putting stuff together like that and showing you guys that you don't have to break the bank to have a killer setup. I'm trying to think what else I can tell you about this sucker. Um, again, everything about it is positive except probably the weight. Like I said, out of the three that I've got here, this is the heaviest. So you, you do have to take that into consideration. It's not heavy, like, oh my God, it weighs so much. It's just heavier than the other options. So, <clears throat> again, just a quick, brief overview. I'm excited to try it out. I will get you guys another video once I get it mounted up and can put some rounds through it but let's just give you a little close-up run by of it here you can kind of see what she looks like got all your adjustments yeah that's a nice scope that's a nice scope oh other big difference is the glass that's in these versus the glass that's in the others. Um, <clears throat> if memory serves me correct, this is Japanese glass. And my eyeball ain't the best in the world as far as telling the difference. Um, all the primary arm stuff looks really, really good to me. So 
I can't in all honesty tell you that I personally, with my eyesight, can tell a huge difference between them. I will say this is extraordinarily clear glass. I mean, it is really clear. Boy, it's hard to tell any difference between the two, but man, it's clear. And, and it's proof that you don't have to break the bank to get a good scope. Do I sound like I'm trying to pitch it to you? kind of am because it's a good scope. I don't get nothing for pitching it to you, but it's a good scope. Good tight seal on the battery. Yep, there's O-rings in there for the battery, so it's it's all waterproofed and all that good stuff. So if you gotta swim across a creek or get caught out in a thunderstorm, like happens to me fairly often because it likes to rain here, <clears throat> you're not gonna have any issues with water in this scope. I was just checking something because I wonder if they still yep. <laughs> Buddy of mine, who will remain nameless, was unaware back in the day until I mentioned it on a video that most of the variable SLX scopes from primary arms come with a spare battery in the uh, windage turret cap. Um, it's already got one in there. You can store a spare here and it actually comes with a spare. But of mine didn't know that until I clued him in on it. Always been a cool feature. Now the uh, GLX doesn't have that. GLX doesn't have it. Stay there. Don't you go nowhere. Get back in there. See, even the, even the, the SLX has got O-rings on the battery compartment. If I can put it back on there without dropping it everywhere. So it's sealed up as well. No worries about the water. <clears throat> and as far as this one, is it daylight bright? Heck, I don't know. I never illuminate it because there's never a need to. I mean, it's still somewhat sunny outside and I'm looking out the window. I've got it on the highest illumination and it's plenty bright. I can actually see it better with the illumination off because, you know, black etched reticle. Easiest thing in the world to see, but I digress. There you go, guys. You're probably tired of listening to it by now, but if you're here for a short infomercial, you're at the wrong place because I just talk about what I like and why I like it. This would make, again, we're talking the context of the armed citizen, armed prepared citizen, just in case there's ever any question about it. That's always the context for me, unless stated otherwise. But sometimes people don't get that. So uh, armed prepared citizen is the context here. This would make a really good scope, and it's probably the role that I'm going to put it into as kind of a designated marksman type-ish role, not in the military sense of it, but in the armed prepared citizen sense of it, in that if I was working with a couple of friends, and let's say they were running 1X optics, I could have this on a good 16-inch gun and run it at 1X and use it just like any other 1X optic, but if we needed to make a more precise shot, we got the capability of cranking that up to 6x and going to work doing what we need to do. Allow you to reach out a little further more effectively, but also allow you to be more effective closer in making a more precise shot. Think in the context of you've got a threat that's behind cover that's engaging you. You know where he's at 
but you can't really see enough of him to hit on one X because they say he's 100 yards away, just using a ballpark example. But 100 yards with one X, I might not really be able to see if he's got any vulnerable spots exposed. But when I crank this up to 6X, all of a sudden at 100 yards, oh, there's your thigh sticking out from uh, underneath that cover. Okay, pop, and pop goes the weasel. So you get the context. The magnification isn't always about reaching out further. It's about being able to engage more precisely, sometimes at closer in targets within a given situation. Now we're getting into other stuff outside just overviewing the scope. So I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole in this video. Just wanted to ramble a little bit about it, which I think I've accomplished much to some of you's chagrin. Um, yeah, I'll put a link in the bottom. Description box. M6 GLX Raptor. It's a sweet optic. I am excited to get that mounted up and try it out. Once I get it done, I will of course be back to you guys to show you and let you know and get it to the range. Keep repairing guys. Stay ready. I'll see you later.